I started this gangsta sh** And this the mother thanks I get Hello I started this gangsta sh** And this the mother Hey, if you like this content but haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe right now. Thanks. All right, it's Comic Artist Pro with the Disney Channel Flow. My name is Ethan Van Skyver, 26-year veteran of this dying, sad uh, comic book industry. World's most charming, elegant, eloquent, and yet humble man. Great big Star Wars fan, trusted member of the media. So let me tell you a story about Chelsea Kane. Uh, Chelsea Kane was a novelist. She decided to dip her toe into the bubbling uh, tumultuous waters of the comic book industry and uh, she went to work for Marvel Comics writing a book called Mockingbird. Now Chelsea Kane uh, decided to make Mockingbird into a feminism advocate, a feminist, third wave feminist uh, and uh, basically the character bore no resemblance to the character that we all knew who was married to Hawkeye, uh, fun, adventurous, a little bit insecure. Uh, all of that uh, all of that stuff was gone because basically when SJWs like Chelsea Kane uh, come in to take over anything uh, creatively, they they don't pay attention to what came before. They don't do their research. They might read a Wikipedia article, uh, but then they just go full forward uh, and do what they always do, uh, which is to take take this platform and make it an outlet outlet to scream about social justice. Now, uh, famously, Chelsea Kane uh, is, is kind of responsible for uh, the cover of Mockingbird, uh, in which Mockingbird is drinking a tropical drink, wearing a pink shirt that says, ask me about my feminist agenda. This infuriated comic book fans. And eventually Mockingbird was canceled and uh, Chelsea Kane just kind of disappeared from comics for a little while to write some more novels. <clears throat> she then uh, came back to Marvel Comics a little bit later. Uh, they gave her a job writing a Vision miniseries uh, that took her two years to produce, I think, four issues of a six issue miniseries, Marvel quietly canceled it and kind of asked her, Chelsea, would you kind of take a walk? Just, uh, we're going to pay you, we'll pay you your kill fee. Just take a walk and be quiet about this because we, we know this is going to cause trouble. But, you know, look, this is what we have to do. Chelsea Kane said, uh, maybe you didn't hear uh, when I said, ask me about my feminist agenda. And she blew up Marvel Comics all over the internet. <clears throat> Listen, always, you know, when somebody tells you who they are, pay, play, pay close attention. Uh, so uh, that is what happened. Now, Chelsea Kane, in the meantime, had also started up a comic book called Man Eaters. Uh, Man Eaters uh, for Image Comics, which was a story about uh, young women who uh, become werewolves when they get their periods. And uh, this was, uh, now, you know, a lot of people hear this idea and go, gross, ew. Uh, and yeah, ew, gross. Uh, but also, I got to say, you know, just objectively, it's not a bad idea. You know, it's, it's kind of modern. It's not something that you would see in a 1950s horror flick, certainly. Uh, it, but it is, you could kind of picture it happening today in horror movies today. Uh, so, you know, look, it, it is what it is. It's a neat idea that's a little bit gross. Uh, the question is execution. Can Chelsea Kane execute this comic book well? Uh, now, the answer to that has been mixed uh, and varied. Some people thought it was pretty good. Uh, other people thought it was uh, a good idea but boring, and some people thought it was just dreadful. Uh, that is irrelevant to what is happening to Chelsea Kane now. It doesn't matter if Chelsea Kane was writing Maneaters spectacularly. It doesn't matter if Chelsea Kane's idea for Maneaters was genius or garbage. It doesn't make any difference to SJWs and to the persecution that she is suffering right now. Chelsea Kane is under attack for being trans-exclusionary. <laughs> All right, let me explain what that means. So in her story, you'd picture these little girls, okay, and they get their superpowers or their werewolf powers or whatever it is that they do when they, uh, you know, menstruate. Uh, now, transgenders uh, within comics uh, and transgendered advocates, I believe, uh, and SJWs in general. Let's just say SJWs in general. Uh, because I don't believe all trans people are upset about this at all. Um, but SJWs are coming down hard on Chelsea Kane because, well, you know, why aren't there any trans girls that become werewolves when they menstruate? All right, you know, I mean, you can you can figure out the problem that that is a perplexing situation for Chelsea Kane to find herself in. That is, there is no way out of that if you're an SJW, except to say all of you go away, like leave me alone. Uh, you weirdos, and to realize once and for all that Comics Gate was right from the start. You know, Chelsea, we were right about these people, and I, I know you try to swim with these people. They, they are piranhas who uh, do piranhas swim in schools. I don't think they do. Do they? 
they might. Let's just say the piranha swim in schools, okay? Well, this is a special new breed of piranha. Uh, SJWs are like piranhas that swim in schools. If you ever watch a school of fish, they all follow the same current, the same tide. For some reason, they know to the minutest detail how to swish their tail uh, at the right moment, where to turn suddenly. Uh, they're all in sync with each other. The minute one of them goes out of sync, uh, you know, let's just say these piranhas will turn on that uh, other piranha, that pariah piranha, and they will gobble it up. And that is uh, always the case, Chelsea. Chelsea Kane, they have turned on you and they've decided to gobble you up. And I don't know why, okay? I have my theories. Uh, one of my theories is that whatever happened at Marvel Comics, however the uh, Vision miniseries went down, like the asking her to be quiet and her blowing them up, uh, that displeased a lot of weirdo SJW gatekeepers who decided to take Chelsea Kane out. That is my personal theory. And people say I'm paranoid, but <laughs> just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they ain't out to get you. And these weirdos are out to get you. I, I do believe that you know that is kind of the way things work. Uh, if you fall out of line, uh, the powers that be will will come down and take you out. So my theory could be wrong. Uh, let's see what SJWs are saying. So here's Chelsea Kane, by the way. Let's see this. Uh, she says, Man Eaters Volume 2 comes out tomorrow. Support local comic book uh, stores and independent bookshops. Uh, these are the retailers who keep our books, uh, books like ours, alive. Uh, they hand sell this sucker. Uh, yeah, that's sad. Please give them your business. It matters. I want you to look at this cover, by the way. It's a glittery paw print of blood. I, I, don't, I don't know if it gets you know, more explicit than that. I, I think that kind of sums it all up. Uh, you know, uh, all right, let's move on here. So Chelsea's advertising her book. Good for her. Uh, and here we go. In light of using your book to mock a fan's concern, I think I'll drop my subscription and support my local comic shop with another title, Bummed. Uh, now, uh, what are they talking about here? Uh, you took valid, gentle criticisms from trans women and put them in the mouths of fascists. Hard pass. What? What did she do? So she's advertising the second issue of uh, of her book, they're just starting to read her book, and let's find out what it is that Chelsea did. Uh, this guy says, uh, it's especially cool if you like criticisms of trans erasure and cultural appropriation. My God, it's just a headache with these people. It is a headache with them. This is, this is headache-inducing. Criticisms of trans erasure and cultural appropriation to be mocked in a passive-aggressive, oppressive way. Passive-aggressive, oppressive uh, and or if you like it when creators steal other people's tweets. By the way, SJWs have a real bee in their bonnet, okay, about their, the idea that the things that they tweet on Twitter are copyright protected. They have, a, they have a copyright. They have every right to just say whatever they want to say in public on a public platform, and they own the rights to their tweets, and nobody can exploit them for any reason. Uh, they're obsessed with the idea of suing people for copyright infringement for actually showing the world what these maniacs say. So in other words, uh, this person right... No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Where did he go? I thought I had him here. Oh, this guy right here. Uh, let's. Oh, we'll go back, and we'll look at those others. So, uh, that Maneaters comic with the tweets is definitely a violation of copyright. And I would encourage the people who originally uh, posted those tweets uh, to take action ASAP. More information about how Twitter copyright works here. Uh, actually, Twitter uh, says that when you post here on Twitter, all of your tweets uh, are open for exploitation. You are giving them away. Uh, they, they make that very clear. It's in the actual contract in the opening. Anything that you tweet uh, can be used by anyone else uh, that is that is the way it goes i know that you guys don't want to actually pay the the social cost uh of normal people looking at what it is that you're saying and what you're doing and the torture that you inflict on uh normal and somewhat normal people uh and not and not have to uh, pay any social cost for that but unfortunately your tweets are uh, public property as soon as you tweet them. So let's scroll back a little bit and let's just look at what this is. All right, uh, this person says, I am uncertain if the inclusion if the inclusion of these tweets is a recognition of valid criticism or if it's mocking them. Uh, they appear in what is essentially a correction facility, yet they are worded so profoundly that they come across as positive, uh, not aggressive, hashtag man -eaters. So this is what Chelsea Kane did. And this takes uh, this takes uh, incredible moxie, I gotta say, I am uh, I'm impressed. Uh, she actually took the crazy tweets 
that she was receiving from SJWs who were saying, you need to have more trans women in this comic. And she just posted them on the walls of whatever this is. I think this is some kind of clinic that these girls are waiting in line for. And then on the wall are these framed pictures. And in the pictures are the tweets that Chelsea Kane is receiving that are, quite frankly, insane. Uh, I appreciate any comic on menstruation and the literal violent eating of men. I super duper do. But man eaters further cements the toxicity of a gender binary in a he some heavy handed sad way. Uh, of course, Chelsea Kane used, you know, kind of put the twit, the tweeter, the tweeter, the Twitter tweet uh, logo here, and then had this kind of heavy woman uh, blocking uh, whoever it is that actually tweeted that. It's very considerate. Uh, and then over here, same thing. I want to like at Image Comics uh, the Man Eaters. Man Eaters so bad, but it is so heavily founded, so heavily founded in bio -es essentialism. <clears throat> Let me say that again. In bio essentialism, I wanted to say existentialism for some reason. Bio essentialism and turfness that it's impossible not to feel like it perpetuates the same misogyny, systemic violence that uh, it's attempting to tackle. God, I mean, it's just. Uh, can these people just leave people alone with this incredibly weird criticism? So, uh, again, um, well, why did she do it? I mean, that is that is the question. She says, the thing this person says, with the colorful hair, cartoon avatar that no doubt uh, makes this person look a lot more attractive than they look in real life, uh, and colorful hair. Uh, actually, I'm not sure. The pronouns here are confusing. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, the tweet about Chelsea Kane, uh, including those tweets in Man Eaters, is what she's pretending. Not including the Twitter handle is somehow protecting people. Uh, it's that she's pretending. Okay, so she thinks that she's protecting people, you know, by not including the Twitter handle. She's making it so these people are not going to endure any kind of harassment. Did you know people can still find those tweets, Chelsea? Um, yeah, they could. They could just look up the tweet. They could just literally search in the exact text of that tweet and then find out who said those things. Chelsea says, I didn't know that. Uh, I just wanted uh, to acknowledge that really painful criticisms of the work, uh, the really painful criticisms of the work, and that sense I have that no matter how hard we try, we are still, we're made to feel worthless and small. It, it was meant to echo a voice, uh, the one that tells me I'm a failure or as I call it, Twitter. Now, that is uh, that is somebody who takes Twitter way too seriously. Uh, these people are monsters, Chelsea. Uh, they don't really mean any of this. Uh, they've just chosen to bully you. And the reasons why, I, I you know, again, we can only speculate because you've been a good soldier uh, for the SJWs. Uh, you pissed off Comicsgate. You know, you kicked Comicsgate off. Uh, you made it seem uh, as though comics, Marvel Comics were uh, meant to, uh, to, to showcase far left-wing views. And you did a good job of that. I mean, you really did. Uh, these people should be proud of you. They should be throwing you parades. But for some reason, for some reason, they've decided to turn on you and attack you. And again, this is open for speculation. I I think I'm right. Okay, I really do think that my uh, theory is, is correct about this. I think you, uh, I think you bothered. Here's the thing. Now, let's go over this really quickly. For people who think this is a paranoid theory, uh, Chelsea Kane, of course, is uh, an important part of anti-comics gate. You know, Marvel Comics gave her a platform that she misused uh, to espouse feminist dogma. Marvel Comics is now full-time, uh, you know, a lifestyle brand pumping out far left-wing social justice warrior uh, pablum uh, to a diminishing, uh, quickly dwindling audience. Uh, and Chelsea Kane. Uh, was one of their star pupils, even though they couldn't ever really afford to keep her on a book because her book sold so poorly. Uh, when uh, her vision book, and I mean, practically speaking, she was working on a six-issue miniseries uh, for two years and only had two-thirds of it done, which meant it was going to be another year uh, before the, the vision series was going to come out. And in the meantime, they had people uh, working on you know, other Vision miniseries that were taking the character in a different direction. They quietly asked, they asked their star pupil, one of them, to just quietly go away. Uh, and Chelsea Kane stabbed them right in the chest. Not in the back, in the chest. I don't think she ever said, okay, I will. Uh, she said, maybe you didn't hear me when I said, ask me about my feminist agenda. You are mistreating a woman uh, that you hired. You knew I was a feminist. Uh, now I'm going to embarrass you. Now I'm going to embarrass you. So, um, yeah, I, I can kind of see to that. I can, I can picture that leading to this. I can picture somebody at Marvel, some weirdo at Marvel, uh, actually starting 
promoting, encouraging a whisper network uh, campaign of harassment to destroy Chelsea Kane for that falling uh, out of line. Uh, that is, again, uh, that theory is seeming better and better to me. All right, so this weirdo is saying, you know, ah, oh, yeah, your tweets are copyright protected. Um, right here, uh, no, you don't get to sick 13,000 followers on it. Does she only have 13,000 uh, on a fan with concerns about your book and then say you didn't know? Uh, you don't get to say you represent all women while, while simultaneously uh, S-wording on most women. Uh, you said this in response to those tweets and you blew it for pettiness. Uh, all right, she said, uh, we will work on being more nuanced. This is what she said that just got her that nasty uh, response. We will work on being more nuanced and less specific. I guess I think of stories as points of view, uh, as in a person's uh, story in the world. I guess I thought that being specific was kind of the reason I was doing this. Chelsea Kane is an actual novelist. Chelsea Kane is an actual storyteller. She's a storyteller with an agenda, uh, but she kind of knows what she's doing. And for these weirdos, uh, these mentally ill, crazy people on Twitter, these SJWs, uh, to all come together to attack her and tell her that how she's telling stories is wrong uh, is audacity of the highest level. It is absolutely amazing. Chelsea, this should be a wake-up call for you. I don't think it will be. Uh, you know, and here she goes. Uh, after all of the harassment and abuse, once again, Chelsea Kane has deleted her Twitter. Okay, so I think the SJWs got what they wanted. They smelled her blood in the water, and uh, you know they they went in and fully attacked her and harassed her. And by the way, I'm, I just showed you a minuscule fraction uh, of the number of angry tweets that came her way. Chelsea Kane has fled Twitter uh, under this abuse. She's a very sensitive woman, evidently. Uh, and congratulations, SJWs. You broke one of yourselves. I mean, you broke, you broke a very talented advocate for social justice. You broke her for what? I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, but let's see. Uh, this person here. I'm pretty sure this is a fake account, or it's like a parody account. It it has to be. I didn't want Chelsea Kane to leave Twitter. I just wanted her to pay me and a trans masculine person to help make her comic better. That's got to be a parody. But you know what? I don't know. I actually went to this account and looked. Can't really tell. I can't really tell. This person says, I try really hard uh, to make my tweets seem like a parody. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are. Uh, this person could be very sincere. And who would even know? And then finally, we've got the horrible, uh, sad sack loser, uh, hostile SJW scumbag, uh, Kieran Shiak here, who is now officially calling himself Sandwich Boy. Uh, he's calling himself Sandwich Boy because, oh, by the way, does he look familiar? Does he, does he look like uh, a sketch? Any kind of a... Does he look like my Soy Boy sketch? He might. Uh, they all look the same. All these people look the same. Uh, he calls himself Sandwich Boy because, uh, famously, uh, he went to go see uh, Hamlet. Not Hamlet. I'm sorry. What's the... Uh, Hamilton. He went to go see Hamilton uh, in London, uh, the equivalent of Broadway. Uh, and then he um, had to crowdfund. He started a crowdfund effort, a GoFundMe effort, to buy themselves, he and his girlfriend, dinner. Uh one one assumes a sandwich uh, because he pled to everybody that he was broke. He he spent all his money on the play and he didn't have money for food now. Uh, so everyone kind of said, yeah, uh, buy Kieran Chiaka sandwich. Uh, now he's he's actually adopted that. Ha ha ha, sandwich boy. Hey, sandwich boy, why don't you pay uh, the transgendered artist uh, that you hired uh, to do your Kickstarter campaign and never paid her? Why don't you pay her? Uh, she's come out against you as, uh, you know, uh, a fraud and a con man. Uh, I'm not even going to bother. Uh, Chelsea Kane deleting her Twitter. This is amazing. Seems like a calculated move to draw a parallel between the harassment she received from Mockingbird, which was awful, and the criticism she received from Maneaters, which was valid. Okay. Uh, what, what happened with Mockingbird was not awful. It was uh, a, a group of paying customers who did not like having feminism uh, into in their comic books. They just it wasn't meant to be there. It shouldn't have been there. Uh, and it seemed like, uh, you know, uh, it seemed disgusting. Uh, and then the criticism she received from Maneaters, which was not valid. It was insane. Now, uh, this guy here, Kieran Chiak, is actually, he thinks everything is a is some kind of op. It's some kind of plan. Like, Chelsea Kane, like, decided, well, if I just delete my Twitter after, you know, days and days and days of harassment by crazy SJWs, maybe... Uh, people will start to draw a parallel between how awful SJWs are and then the harassment that they claim that I receive from Comicsgate. Wow, that's a great scheme. Most people don't do that. Most people actually just uh, think and act with their hearts. Uh, and sometimes uh, 
you know, that results uh, in, in something temperamental uh, like Chelsea Kane deleting her Twitter. Uh, but these people are so cynical. And also, um, I, I don't know if they feel shame for this. He says, it also reinforces the idea that trans people contribute to the patriarchal oppression of cis women. Well, I didn't say it. I didn't say it, you know. Uh, you know, I, I, that seems to be what you're saying. Uh, which is one of the main problems that people have with man-eaters in the first place. Well, uh, if that is the case, if that is the case, uh, well done in proving those people correct. Uh, Chelsea Kane did absolutely nothing wrong. Uh, she wrote a book that was, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, again, I don't know how to describe it. I kind of admire the, the interesting idea of it. Does it appeal? It might appeal to 13-year-old girls who, you know, are only beginning, you know, becoming women. Uh, and it's a confusing thing, and the idea of associating superpowers with, you know, uh, becoming a woman, I, you know, uh, it might be a cool thing. It might be a cool idea. Uh, they they might be able to deal with, you know, getting their periods, which I imagine is is kind of traumatic and scary for some of them. Uh, in this way, it's, it's a pretty neat book that serves that that purpose and that little that little audience there. Uh, I don't think she meant for it to speak up against for all kinds of women. I think she was just telling a little story. And I think people like this are psychopaths who um, hinder artwork. They hinder art. And this was very much art. And we can disagree with what Chelsea Kane has to say about all kinds of other things. Uh, but it should be clear at this point that SJWs are in the way of uh, art. They stop it. They kill it. They kill it dead. They chase it away uh, and make people sad. Uh, you know, so F you. Uh, I want to make that clear, dude, F you. Uh, and uh, Chelsea Kane, I don't know what to say. Uh, you know, Comicsgate uh, is watching all of this. I think comic skaters are watching all of this and, and feeling kind of validated by it. Uh, feeling kind of validated by the abuse that we just watched you suffer at the hands of the very people that we said are killing the comic book industry. You are one more example of them doing just that. Thank you. I know this was kind of a long video, but it's a big story, uh, and uh, you know, I, I wanted to get it out there and and, and uh, put my point of view about it, you know, uh, out there while people are talking about it. Thanks for listening. Subscribe. Uh, you know, hit like. Please share this video. Talk about it. What do you think about this in the comments? Uh, you know, tell me what you think about the idea. Tell me what you think about why they're doing this. Uh, why they would do this to their own? Is it just because they're awful and just feel the need to attack someone and just choose someone and uh, that's what it is, or do you think that it was a little bit more organized uh, by uh, the people who actually gatekeep and uh, control the whisper networks within the comic book industry? Let me know your opinion, and thanks very much. I'll see you again later with another video. Hey, I got a P.O. Box. Want to send me some mail? Send it to Ethan Van Skyver, P.O. Box 607, Marlton, New Jersey, 08053, and I'll probably open it up on the live stream. Thanks very much, everyone. Hey, you want to follow me on Twitter? Are you sure? Well, if so, I'm at Ethan Van Skyver. That's at Ethan Van Skyver. See you there. Hello, potential Indiegogo backers. Hello, friends. My name is Ethan Van Skyver. I'm a comic book creator who worked for 20 years for Marvel and DC Comics on books like Green Lantern, Flash, Superman, Batman, and X-Men. But before that, I had a comic book called Cyberfrog. Now, Cyberfrog lasted from 1993 to 1998, and then it stopped when I went to go work for DC Comics. Now I want to tell the story of where Cyberfrog has been for the last 20 years. I want to write, pencil, ink a book called Cyberfrog Blood Honey that tells the story of gigantic alien hornets that come to Earth and conquer it, sending Cyberfrog into deep hibernation where he emerges now in the year 2018 into a completely alternate reality, a new world where these hornets have taken over, devastated humanity, using human skin to make gigantic wasp hives and harvesting human blood to make honey to feed their young. Very few humans still exist. But it's up to Cyberfrog to save what's left of humanity and turn back the damage that's been done by these wasps with his brother Salamandroid and his friend Heather Swain. I want you to help me do this. We're gonna get colors by Kyle Ritter. He's a fantastic colorist and he's gonna make this book sing. Uh, I'd like this to be a 48 page one shot prestige format part one of four. So I'm asking you to help me launch the very first Cyberfrog Blood Honey epic graphic novel. 
Are you in? Will you help me? I hope so. Let's get this frog jumping again. If you enjoyed this video and want to become part of this community, subscribe to this channel by clicking the Laughing Man Face logo right on your screen. Ring the bell for notifications as well. You'll never miss a live chat. And stay tuned, another video by Comic Artist Pro Secrets is coming right up.